In this video, I'm going to be going through the third AQA required practical, which is about electrolysis. And this video focuses on the theory behind that so we can really understand this practical. So electrolysis is the splitting of ionic compounds by electricity. And the apparatus you'll need is something like this. So you have a beaker and that contains your ionic compound. Then you've got the two electrodes. So on the left, I've got the negative electrode, which is called a cathode. And on the right, the positive electrode, which is called the anode. And then all of this is hooked up to a power source. So how does this constitute a complete circuit? Well, electricity is the flow of charge. And for charge to flow across the entire circuit, it needs to be carried by something. In the metal wires and electrodes, the charge is passed along by the delocalized electrons. In the solution, there are free moving ions, which can also carry the charge. And thus, this completes the circuit. We call the solution the electrolyte, and something I just mentioned is really important to understanding electrolytes. The ions in the electrolyte must be free to move so that they can carry charge. To understand why, let's look at sodium chloride, or salt. On the left is solid sodium chloride. If I hook that up to a circuit with a light bulb, the light wouldn't turn on. It doesn't conduct electricity. On the right is sodium chloride dissolved in water. This time, if I connect a circuit, the light would turn on. The difference is that in the solid, the ions are not free to move, so they can't carry a charge. In the solution, the ions are free to move, so they can carry a charge and complete a circuit. So in order to have free moving ions, you have two options. You can either dissolve your ionic compound in water, as we've seen, or you can melt it down. Let's have a look at the electrolysis of molten compounds first, as it's a slightly simpler scenario. Let's take the example of sodium chloride. So our electrolyte solution is going to be made up of sodium ions and chloride ions. And you can see that on the right, we've got Na plus ions and Cl minus ions. The positive sodium ions are going to be attracted to the negative electrode. And the negative chloride ions are attracted to the positive electrode. At the negative electrode, each sodium atom gains an electron. This means they're reduced to sodium metal. And at the positive electrode, each chloride ion loses an electron, which means they're oxidised to chlorine gas. So the general rule for molten ionic compounds is that the metal forms at the negative electrode and the non-metal forms at the positive electrode. So we can see another example here of lead bromide. The metal, lead, is formed at the negative electrode and the non-metal bromine is formed at the positive electrode. So moving on to dissolved ionic compounds, and we have the example of sodium chloride dissolved in water. Now, water partially dissociates, or we can also say it partially ionizes. This means we have an equilibrium set up, and on the left we have some water molecules, and we also have on the right some hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, that's H plus and OH minus. So in this situation, we don't only have Na plus and Cl minus ions, we also have H plus and OH minus ions. Now, the positive ions are going to be attracted to the negative electrode, and the negative ions are going to be attracted to the positive electrode, but you see we have some choices to make here. So we need to know a few rules to know which ions are going to be reduced and which ions are going to be oxidised. At the negative electrode, so looking on the left hand side first, the least reactive positive ion is reduced, meaning the more reactive element stays in the solution. So we need to know the reactivity series for this. And we can see that 
hydrogen is less reactive than sodium. So what we get forming at the negative electrode here is hydrogen gas and the sodium stays in the solution. So actually it's only ever copper, silver and gold that will be formed at that electrode if it's not hydrogen. Now looking at the positive electrode on the right hand side, if there's a halide ion, so that's a Cl minus, a Br minus or an I minus, then the halogen is formed, so Cl2, Br2 or I2. If there is no halide ion, then it's going to be oxygen formed. So in this example, we do have a halide ion, we have the chloride ion, so that means chlorine gas is produced. Now, in the practical, you have four solutions to electrolyze. These are all examples of dissolved ionic compounds, or aqueous solutions, which means you're going to have water involved. Using the information we've just learned, we can predict what's going to be produced at the cathode and the anode. So let's look at the top one, copper 2 chloride, and the ions present. So we're going to have copper ions, and we're told it's copper 2 plus. And we're going to have chloride ions. Now, as I've said, these are examples of dissolved ionic compounds. So we're going to have the ions present in water as well. So that's the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion. Now, the product at the negative electrode. So the positive ions are going to be attracted to the negative electrode. So we've got a choice between Cu2 plus and H+. Plus. Now, it's the least reactive one of those that is reduced. It's the least reactive one that we get produced. So that is copper in our reactivity series. Copper is less reactive than hydrogen. At the positive electrode, the negative ions are going to be attracted. So we have a choice between Cl- and the hydroxide ion. Because there is a halide ion present, and that's Cl-, we're going to get the halogen, which is chlorine. Now, looking at the second example, we've got copper 2 sulfate. So those ions are going to be Cu2+, and the sulfate ion is SO4-2-. Remember, it's in a solution, so we've also got the H plus ion and the OH minus ion. At the negative electrode, the positive ions are going to be attracted. So we've got a choice between Cu2 plus and H plus. And again, copper is less reactive than hydrogen, so we get copper. At the positive electrode, the negative ions are going to be attracted. So we have no halide this time. We don't have a halide ion, which means we're going to get oxygen. For sodium chloride, we're going to have sodium ions, which are Na+, and chloride ions, Cl-. And again, it's in solution, so we've got H+, and OH-. Now, this time, at the negative electrode, we've got a choice between Na+, and H+. Hydrogen is less reactive than sodium, so we get hydrogen formed at the negative electrode. At the positive electrode, we've got a choice between Cl- and OH-. Because there's a halide ion, we're going to get the halogen, so that's Cl2. Finally, sodium sulfate. So we're going to have a sodium ion and a sulfate ion. And that's in an aqueous solution, so we're also going to have H+, and OH-. At the negative electrode, the positive ions will be attracted. So we have a choice between Na plus and H plus. Hydrogen is less reactive than sodium, so we get hydrogen gas. And then at the positive electrode, the negative ions will be attracted. This time we don't have a halide ion, so we're going to get oxygen. Thank you for watching this video, and make sure you watch the practical video next, where you can see those electrolysis reactions in the lab.